Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to do a November wrap-up video. I just want to talk about the decks that I've been working with as well as some of the practices that I engaged in throughout the month of November. And I'm really excited to talk to you about the decks that I've been working with um, and I'm really excited to share some of the things that I've been experiencing in my own life and within my own personal practice and um, I'm just excited to connect with you guys. So first I want to share with you my favorite deck at the moment. It's the Yuletide Tarot. I haven't been able to put this deck down. I've been using it pretty much all throughout the month of November and <clears throat> I've noticed I'm even drawn to creating spreads in my planner um, that are themed like for Christmas or Yule um, and I'm starting to think that I'm gonna start doing that I'm gonna like match up the themes of my planner and journal at least with the artwork with the tarot deck that I'm planning on using all throughout the month um, but I have been just obsessed with this deck I'm I love the artwork. The guidebook is pretty decent. It's your standard Llewellyn guidebook. They tend to be pretty... They tend to be fairly... like good. Good quality, I mean. Um, it comes with... the guidebook comes with a full page reproduction of the card. It's in full color. It's a beautiful, beautiful guidebook. Um, the artwork on the deck is excellent. I find that it's very intriguing artwork. It gets the gears in your head moving. And <clears throat> um, I mentioned, I think I talked about this deck in my most recent upload, uh, my winter deck list, I think, or winter decks and books. I can't exactly remember the title at the moment, but it is a deck that I've been thoroughly enjoying I, like I said, I haven't been able to put this deck down. I've been using it pretty much every time I turn to the tarot. I've been enjoying it also with the Soul Mirror um, Oracle deck. Also mentioned that in my winter deck list video. I just recently got this. And I've been obsessed. It's your standard blue angel quality, but the decks are skinnier, so it's much easier to shuffle. And the artwork is just beautiful. It's intriguing. It's very feminine. It has a very feminine energy to it. It's got a lot of lunar energy too. There's so much moons throughout the artwork. Um, it's been, it's created for shadow work and it's excellent for shadow work. Um, the artwork is very thought provoking. I also enjoy that the guidebook has journal prompts. So I, I tend to like to read some of the questions that are part of the journal prompts and sometimes that will get to uh, the heart of the matter the reason why I pulled the card. <laughs> so this is the Soul Mirror Oracle. Um, I pulled from the Talisman Oracle a couple of times this month. It wasn't a great deal. I haven't just, I haven't really been feeling drawn to working with this deck. This is a very, um, like Halloween, Samhain deck to me. Um, but it is a very powerful deck. I like to, I use Oracle typically to get like a bigger picture or a main theme. Um, when I'm doing tarot readings. And I... 
I find that this deck is it, it's pretty good at this at the job. It it does tend to get the job done. I like the artwork. I I like the um, the shadow and light. I think that it has a good balance to it. I like the symbolism in the in the deck as well. I find that that can be very helpful if you're somebody that likes to work with symbolism. Um, and I find the keywords to be quite powerful. Typically, it's easy for me to just look at the keyword and the artwork and get an idea of what it's talking about. This deck is very easy to use um, just intuitively. That's the Talisman Oracle. I just got this on Amazon. Um, it's a US Games Oracle deck. I've also been using color in my journals. Um, before I had my daughter, I was uh, very self-expressive with color. I I had um, a vast, I've mentioned this before on my channel, I had a very large makeup collection. After I had my daughter, I purged a significant amount of that makeup because a lot of it had gone expired um, and we just didn't have the space anymore now that we had a child. So I've been slowly kind of getting back into that. I've been repurchasing some red lipsticks and wearing red lipsticks again. Um, and then just incorporating more color um, into my practice, into my life. Um, I've been using colored ink. I like the Paper Mate pens and I had them in blue. So I picked up a whole pack of different colored ink. So I tend to like choose the color in the morning and then I'll journal with that ink color. And then I'll try to find different ways of incorporating that color into my life, whether it's wardrobe, makeup, um, etc. And that's just to bring more energy to the day. Um, like if I've had a very stressful morning, I tend to go towards browns, greens, blues, purples, just um, particularly green. Like I've mentioned, green is a very grounding color to me. So I always tend to like, I'll wear a green sweater, or I'll journal in green ink, etc. So um, for me, it's just a way for me to balance myself out. Um, I am a water sign. I can be really um, emotional sometimes, although I do have um, a Virgo moon, which I'm thankful for. I do find that it balances me out. Um, and I just really enjoy green. I like the way it feels. I think like it really appeals to that Virgo moon that I have. <laughs> Another thing that I've been doing is observing moon phases um, and just feeling the energy that is associated with that particular moon phase. Even if I don't have the time to do card work or any other type of uh, practice on a moon phase, I do like to at least take a look at the moon phase. Um, and, you know, sometimes that's all I can do uh, with my schedule. And I think that it's a nice way of sort of celebrating that moon phase or taking part in it um, and experiencing the energy without um, doing something that might require a lot more time. Um, the next two decks, the next two decks that I have here sort of fall or fit into the inner child work that I've been doing. My inner child work is focused on feeling empowered because that is the topic or theme that my inner child really wants to, um, I guess, bring to my attention, but also integrate. Um, and a lot of the decks that you'll see probably in the next upcoming months um, while I'm doing this type of work with my inner child are probably going to have similar themes. My childhood 
um, I've already mentioned a little bit about this. Um, it was particularly difficult. Uh, I had, uh, well, I have <laughs> an abusive alcoholic father. So as a child, I was obsessed with witches, um, magical girls like Sailor Moon and heroes, uh, particularly X-Men, because the idea of having superpowers or having magical abilities was fascinating to me as a child because of the difficult um, childhood household that I was being raised in. So for me, a lot of the decks that I am drawn to, uh, to do this type of work with my inner child are focused on like those types of themes you'll see like with this is the mystical manga tarot so it's the closest I can get to that magical girl genre that you can experience with anime um it's not quite Sailor Moon but it's like the closest I can get at the moment this is um a Llewellyn deck so they're known for their their quality guidebooks um and I find that this deck is very easy to read. It's very straightforward. The artwork, I think, is pretty spot on to Rider Waite Smith artwork. Um, is it exactly the same? No, of course not. It's still within the anime. Um, like, it looks very anime. Um, I do find that it's quite magical. Like, there's scenes that you know there there's like moving water fire and stuff so I do find that it really fits the mystical manga theme and like I said it's an excellent deck that I've been enjoying um working with my inner child and, and exploring a lot of thoughts and feelings regarding um empowerment um feeling more empowered personally in my life as well as just feeling more comfortable in my own skin um, and just exploring those types of themes. So this is the mystical manga tarot. Uh, the next tarot deck that I have here is the green witch tarot. So again, kind of going with that theme, here you have a green witch theme. Like I said, as a child, I was obsessed with witches. Um, I've mentioned this a lot on my channel, that the idea of a witch just fascinated with, it just fascinated me as a child. And um, this deck, it's, it feels very witchy. It has um, a lot of Celtic mythology. It, like all throughout the imagery. It was written by an actual practicing green witch. <laughs> and also I think like there's a lot of nature with it being, you know, the green witch tarot. There is a lot of nature presented throughout the imagery that I think also appeals to me. I love nature. Um, one of the hugest, you know, things that I've introduced to my daughter since she was born, um, once the weather <laughs> allowed, we would go on daily, I call them adventures, but I would take her outside every single day. We would go to the local parks and just being out in nature and experiencing nature. Um, my daughter uh, is also an earth moon sign, so, you know, she's loves being outdoors. She's a Taurus moon, although she's an Aquarius. You know, I do, f I do see the Taurus moon. She loves being outside. She loves exploring nature. Um, and I'm just happy that I have somebody else that I can experience that with. My Virgo moon is just so happy being out in nature. Um, 
particularly my favorite time of the year is spring and I just I love how everything's just so green and the colors come back and the, the weather is typically um, fairly decent at least around May <laughs> but it is something that I experience in this deck as well is just the greenery although I think this isn't necessarily spring I I find like the color palette it's better for this time of the year um, around the fall it's excellent for transitioning into winter just because of the color palette it's a lot of fall colors um, the oranges and the yellows um, it's just a beautiful deck honestly um, it does read slightly different than your traditional Rider Waite Smith. I do think that she switched around some cards, but it is a beautiful deck. So the last tarot deck that I have here is the uh, Tarot of Vampires. So the Tarot of Vampires, if you're not new to tarot, I'm sure you know all about the tarot vampires. Um, the guidebook is considered probably one of the best guidebooks that you can get for tarot. Um, it's pretty decently priced. It's a Llewellyn deck. Same with the uh, Green Witch. I can't remember if I told you. I think I did. Um, so easily accessible. Um, like I said, excellent guidebook. Um, I think that this deck is excellent for doing that inner child work that I was talking to you about. It has like, it, it's excellent for that feeling empowered, particularly how I experience femme fatale um, energy and just tapping into my own inner femme fatale. Um, Although I find like the art, the imagery, it goes really well with the Samhain or Halloween, with the fall. Um, I'm not as drawn to it around this time of the year because we are starting to transition into winter weather. We're starting to get snow and ice. So I've been more drawn to the Yule Tarot, which I showed you at the very beginning of this video, but I still do enjoy talking about this deck, I think that it's worth talking about. Um, and I'm sure I will continue to use this to work on more of that empowerment that I was talking to you about, um, which I, I'm still planning on doing an inner child video. That's probably something that I'm going to go more deeper into within that video. So a compendium of witches. I recently purchased this to do a Hecate workshop on my channel, but I ended up getting really sick the week that I was going to do it. <laughs> you know what? I still did the work, so I might end up doing the workshop um, sometime within the future when I have a bit more time. Um, but I just enjoyed the experience of this deck. Again, it's witch-themed. Um, I mentioned in my winter um, deck list video. There's familiars and then there's specific like archetypes of witches. Um, so this is very excellent for that type of path work um, within a witchcraft practice, even a pagan uh, practice. I use this deck to do meditations. I would choose a figure. Um, I chose from the figures um, in the cards and then I did a meditation and then I would pull cards as well and then I would interpret the message. Uh, that's one way that I enjoy working with this deck. Um, there's a lot of crone energy present throughout the deck. A lot of the figures are crones. Um, which I think is so valuable. It's so hard to find decks with um, older women in it, honestly. Um, I, I like seeing older women. Um, and I think that 
there's all obviously there's maidens as well like I, I don't think that it's just crones um, there's a good diversity in the figures and like I said there's familiars and I think there's tools as well like there's a sickle here so it's excellent for that type of path work uh, meditation um, even archetypes I could see you connecting with the figures as an archetype. So this is the a compendium of witches. I'm still getting to know her. Like I said, I just purchased her maybe a couple of weeks ago. So still getting to know her. So I'm going to reserve uh, really giving you a review until I get to know her a lot better than I currently do. Um, I'm pretty much back to journaling every single day um, for the most part. Um, I hate the Blue Angel boxes, I have to admit. <laughs> They're so hard sometimes. I, I like something more snug for my cards. But yeah, so the journaling is pretty much where it was before um, the significant changes in my life. Um, I found that November, I was just very inspired to create art. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned, but throughout my childhood, uh, I was very creative. Um, I, I could draw. Um, I was able to pick up drawing fairly quickly. I think it runs in the family, to be honest. And um, the childhood that I had, um, I spent a lot of time drawing. <laughs> so I've... I'd say after I picked, I had my daughter, I picked back up drawing um, because honestly it had been years since I had drawn anything um, up until I had my daughter. Then all of a sudden I started drawing again. So for me, I felt so incredibly inspired to create art in my journal. This is my planner journal. I don't typically tend to feel this inspired to create art, so um, I'm happy to report that. <laughs> and I think that it's going to be a significant part of my spiritual practice going forward. Um, I felt a lot more connected to my practice, so I'm thinking for January, I've I'm obsessed with Alice in Wonderland. I don't even know why. Um, and the tea party themes. <laughs> so I'm thinking of doing that for January. I don't know. I'll let you know when the time comes. But uh, that is my November wrap up. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed some of the decks and maybe some of the artwork that I showed you today. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of this video. Um, how your practice was throughout the month of November. I am dying to know, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.